So the Tesla supercharging network is probably the best supercharging network for Tesla EVs in the world. But of course, possibly Tesla's biggest advantage is its supercharging network, which includes over 35,000 fast charging stations and is the largest global fast charging network in the world. Now you can pretty much travel anywhere in the country in a Tesla without worrying about where to charge. And the newest V3 superchargers can charge at a rate up to 1,000 miles an hour. And since all Tesla owners have a Tesla account with a credit card on file, the act of supercharging is extremely easy. Just plug in the cable and that's it. No swiping your credit card or touching screens. Non-Tesla fast charging stations aren't quite this seamless. All right, let's plug in. So here I go. Should just pop up open when I press the button. Yep, there we go and it's automatically gonna charge my account. I didn't have to swipe a card, I didn't have to do anything because it knows this is my car. Charging my account, yeah. The vast majority of EV charging today happens at home, which tends to be a slower charging speed and actually better for longevity of the battery pack. The faster you charge your battery, the more strain you put on the pack. And public DC fast chargers are really meant for long road trips to get up and going as quickly as possible. Tesla works towards having more plugs available at more frequent intervals. Because of that diminishing return on charging speed, it's actually faster to do two half charge stops on a road trip as opposed to one full charge stop. But that's only possible with enough infrastructure. Now Tesla's patchwork of stations is the most interesting to me because no matter where you look at them from around the world, there's a clear pattern that emerges along the major roadways, and they're clearly spaced at distances to keep at least one in reach at all times along those routes. And in densely populated locations, you'll find several options. They aren't absolutely everywhere yet. I mean, for instance, they just turned on the TransCanada route at the end of last year. If you break down the stats by major networks across North America, you have Tesla in the lead with 888 stations, followed up with ChargePoint and EVgo virtually tied for second place. And then Electrify America rounding out the top networks with 459 stations and 2,034 fast chargers. If it's not a Tesla in the US, you are stuck with Electrify America, EVgo, or other networks that are not really reliable. In order to road trip in these cars, these are the available charging options, so they bring down the quality of the product if they do not work. In any case, Tesla of course has superchargers that are incredibly reliable and continually expanding. They just hit 40,000 chargers globally. So I think, however small or large you think Tesla's mode is right now, they're currently working on a massive expansion to get even further ahead, and even if they open up some version of the network to third parties, at least in Europe, that will solidify Tesla's long-term dominance as other automakers will be dependent on Tesla's network. That mode is simply going to expand even further when full self-driving eventually comes into play. One thing I would say is the supercharger units are really visible at night, and that's a big deal for EVs. When I'm not in a Tesla, I'm in a normal EV and I'm looking for public charging points, most of them aren't well illuminated. You come into a car park, you're sniffling around the perimeter for ages in the dark. People like Instavolt are doing it right, but that's where this makes a big difference. And also, there's always way more in one place than other uh, non-Tesla branded charging points. This supercharger network is really the ticket for so many people. There. Tesla does do a good job of showing available charging spots and the charging rate of the chargers inside the car when you're looking for a place to charge up. It's a better user experience tracking them down than some other cars. So when you actually open up the screen and choose a supercharger, it has these little icons that are kind of handy right here. And it just basically tells you there's restrooms, restaurants, coffee, and Wi-Fi available. Uh, you can't click that, like it doesn't show you what exactly there is, but then obviously you could just zoom in on the map, like usual, and see Rubio's, Hooters, the classics. So when I go to the charging menu, it shows me that it's actually slowing down as we're getting closer to the end. We have two minutes remaining, and in this session, I've gained 128 miles already, and it's at $10.24, so I'll let you know what the final total is in a second. So we're finishing up here, but I just wanted to show you, obviously, you're gonna be charging for a little bit of time. So you go to a restaurant, or you could hang out outside the car, but if you want to hang out inside the car, which pretty much everyone here is doing actually. Netflix. Net Overall, my first supercharging experience was great. I know at some crazy times and holidays, they've had lines, so we'll see what that's like. I'll keep you posted, but that's supercharging. It's super easy. 
just takes a little bit of extra time. So if you plan ahead and you go eat food around where the charger is or anything, it's gonna be a great experience. The future is so bright for electric cars. And it is thanks to Tesla. In 10 years, they've gone from this, you know, quirky Lotus with a battery pack to this. And it's done so much good for the mass adoption of EVs. And that I am all for, I really, really am. It's credible.